Excadrill has returned to Gen 9 in the new DLC, and surprisingly, it has maintained its OU position as of the most recent tier shift. Excadrill has managed to outperform not only the fellow ground steel type Iron Treads, which many players thought would outclass Excadrill if it returned, it's also outperforming many of its fellow OU staples of the past, like Garchomp and Latios. Excadrill has had an illustrious competitive career, folks, and it's always been one of my favorite of the new Pokemon released in Gen 5. I love its ground steel typing, its multiple different ability choices, and its really good move pool too. Excadrill really started off with a bang in Gen 5. Sand Rush plus Permanent Sandstorm was so powerful that after a while, Excadrill was banned completely. Many years later, this ban was reversed. Excadrill was unbanned and instead the ability Sand Rush itself was banned. Gen 5 OU is still played to this day, and Excadrill remains a staple of the modern metagame. Even without Sand Rush as an option, Sand Force is a great alternative. This boosts Ground Rock and Steel type attacks by 1.3 times in the Sandstorm, which really enhances Excadrill's damage output, allowing it to pressure common enemies like Ferrothorn. Excadrill is one of the few good rapid spinners in the format, which is very important. Defog and Heavy Duty Boots did not exist back then. And also Mold Breaker is a great ability option. This ability ignores the effects of all other abilities, meaning you can Earthquake a Rotom Wash with Levitate, for example, and just completely ignore Levitate's ground immunity. From Gen 6 onwards, following the nerf to Perm and weather setting abilities, Excadrill with Sand Rush was now legal. This Pokemon is definitely a good win condition, but since Sand only lasts for 5 to 8 turns now, it's no longer as overwhelming. There's also a lot in the metagame that can handle it. Landorus Therian is extremely common. Tangrowth, Skarmory, Ferrothorn, Pokemon like this can withstand Excadrill, Rotom Wash. It's worth noting that Steel Stab became much more valuable from Gen 6 onwards with the introduction of the Fairy type, which is one of the best types in the game. Mold Breaker also became a lot more useful since Magic Bounce was a more relevant presence with Pokemon like Mega Diancie in the metagame. Mega Sableye also was formally allowed in Gen 6 OU but got banned later on. But while it was legal, Mold Breaker was very useful to safely create Stealth Rock or Toxic against Mega Sableye. With the introduction of Z moves in Gen 7, the offensive Excadrill sets became a lot more potent. With the massive base power of Corkscrew Crash, you could actually power through those former checks, Tangrowth and Landorus Therian, pretty easily. Using Excadrill, as an all-in hazard setting lead was also very effective since it had access to both Rapid Spin and Rock Tomb to lower the enemy's speed and respond to whatever they do. Mold Breaker also really helped against those occasional Mega Sableye and Mega Diancie. Spending an entire Pokemon slot just to establish your foot in the door in the hazard game was really worthwhile in Gen 7 and because Excadrill has Rapid Spin too, you could Rock Tomb on the first turn to check if they set Stealth Rock or attacked and respond accordingly. If they attack, you can just Stealth Rock into them. If they Stealth Rock, you can rapid spin away the stealth rocks. You can respond to anything, almost guaranteeing that you get stealth rock in the field and rapid spin away their stealth rock. Sometimes this could have issues against Garchomp or Ferrothorn, because if you're on one HP and you rapid spin against an enemy with rough skin or rocky helmet, the rapid spin actually doesn't happen because you faint. So they keep their rocks on the field. But in a lot of lead matchups, you have a big advantage. In Gen 8, Excadrill actually fell down to UU for the first time, probably largely due to the fact that heavy duty boots now exist, making those all in stealth rock settings sets less valuable. It also doesn't help that Excadrill's common teammate Tyranitar was severely nerfed with the removal of Pursuit from the game. But despite lower usage in this generation than the past two, I think Excadrill still has a lot of advantages that can see use occasionally on certain teams. And to be honest folks, I wasn't sure that Excadrill would maintain its OU position in Gen 9, not only because Iron Treads exists now as a seemingly on the surface better ground steel type, but Tyranitar feels even worse to use in Gen 9 than it did in Gen 8. But the usage stats don't lie, folks. Excadrill was popular enough to maintain its position. Iron Treads is ranked low. And I think there's a few reasons we can pinpoint for this, folks. First of all, I would think that the fall of Landorus Therian is a significant point in Excadrill's favor. Landorus Therian is no longer the Titan it once was. Even though it's still OU, its usage is much lower than it used to be. Landorus Therian has lost so many of its most important options. Back in Gen 8, it lost access to Hidden Power, which was important for coverage. But in Gen 9, it lost Knockoff, Defog, and 
toxic, which were all really crucial. The more popular bulky ground types in this metagame are Gliscor and Great Tusk. And while they're actually pretty decent at checking Excadrill, at least they don't intimidate Excadrill, nerfing its potential as a win condition. Excadrill with an air balloon can also exploit Gliscor specifically, because a lot of Gliscor only run Earthquake as their attacking move, and Toxic can't hit a steel type. Great Tusk is also grounded. It can't intimidate Excadrill, so if Excadrill gets the ball rolling with Swords Dances, unlike Landorus Theory, it can't withstand those big stab earthquakes. I think that another point in Excadrill's favor are the rise of Sun teams in Gen 9, and recently the addition of both Raging Bolt and Gouging Fire, who have become metagame staples very quickly. The new ability Protosynthesis, which grants a boost to your highest stat in the sun, has made a whole new generation of sun threats thrive. And I think there's two big reasons why this is a positive thing for Excadrill. First of all, Tyranitar becomes more worth running when it can shut down enemy sun, ruining their win condition. Tyranitar not only removes their Protosynthesis boost, it's also a nice special wall with the sand rock type special defense boost, helping out greatly against Pokemon like Raging Bolt. And if you happen to win the Weather War, establish your sand, eliminate their Torkoal, Excadrill with Sand Rush is an amazing Pokemon into the most common sun structures. You'd super effectively threaten Raging Bolt, Gouging Fire, you outrun and threaten Roaring Moon with pretty big damage. I think the offensive combination of Excadrill plus Tyranitar is good on its own merits too in other matchups, but the fact that it helps so much against Sand teams is a great point in its favor, and a big reason why Excadrill probably has higher usage right now. The rise of Sun teams is also good for Excadrill's running Mold Breaker and Stealth Rock, which is a set that doesn't even require Tyranitar for synergy. Even though on the majority of teams, Pokemon weak to Rock will be running Heavy Duty Boots now, which makes all-in Rock setting Pokemon a little bit worse. The exception to that are some Sun structures, which actually run Hatterene as a Magic Bounce user to support their Rock weak Pokemon. Torkoal, the Fire type Sun Setter, Gouging Fire, Pokemon like this. You also sometimes see Hatterene structures where Hatterene is used alongside other Rock weak Pokemon like Kyurem. And in these matchups, Exodrill with Mold Breaker and Stealth Rock is amazing. You can set Stealth Rock safely on the field without worrying about Magic Bounce at all. And doing so will severely punish multiple Pokemon on the enemy team and seriously decrease their chances of victory. Terrastalization is also a nice point in favor of Excadrill. This is a team by the player Dragonite4242, which I featured on another video. It's actually a revamped version of a Gen 5 team. And this team is using Terra Ghost on Excadrill. Terrastalizing on Excadrill can be very high value, getting free opportunities to Swords Dance and turning the tables on common checks. You can come in on a Great Tusk Headlong Rush, you're immune with Air Balloon. You Terrastalize Ghost, and now you're also immune to close combat. This also helps out a lot against Zamazenta, who commonly runs Body Press as its only attack. With Terra Ghost, you can completely stonewall them and use it as setup fodder. And this is another cool idea for a Terra type that I've seen on Excadrill. This is a team built by the player Savorus, and on this team, they're using a Stellar Terra type, which is the new Terra type. If you're unaware of how this works, basically, it is not a defensive Terra type. When you Terrastalize to Stellar, you have the same weaknesses, resistances, immunities, everything as you do in your normal typing. But you get a one-time attack boost on all of your attacks for each type. So if they're stab moves, they're 1.5 times. If they're non-stab moves, they're 1.2 times. The most common way that Stellar type has been used so far has been on contrary Pokemon, because Terra Blast actually lowers your attack and special attack when it's Stellar type, but on contrary Pokemon, it does the opposite. It raises your attack and special attack. And I think this is another great way to use the Stellar type on a Pokemon with a powerful stab combination like Excadrill has. Even though this attack boost only applies once to Earthquake and Iron Head, similar to how gems work in Gen 5, that one attack is all you need to power through one of your checks. So in a way, Stellar type can be used similar to how Z moves or gems were used in past generations, and that's how it's being used here. I think it's very impressive to see Excadrill maintaining its OU status despite everything, despite the general power level increasing, despite Iron Treads existing with the same type combination and a lot of advantages on its own right, and also other utility ground types like Great Tusk to compete with. But it looks like Excadrill is setting itself apart from the crowded ground type role in the same way it always has with access to Sand Rush, giving it offensive potency that nothing else has, access to Mold Breaker, giving it advantages in certain matchups that nothing else can achieve as well. I think this goes to show that a well-designed and well-thought-out Pokemon can thrive for years to come. It could definitely drop in the future, be phased out of relevance, but for now, Excadrill is holding on. This video topic was the winner of a poll over on Patreon. Congratulations to Vic Boss MG for winning the poll. Become a patron to suggest topics for yourself and vote on future videos.